Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya I was told I could have any verse, so I chose this one, from the second canto. Chapter 2, Lord in the Heart, text 35. Bhagavan Savabhute Su, Lakshita Svatmanahari, Jusyair Budhyari Biyadrasta, Lakshanair Anumapakai, Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Siddha Prabhupada. The personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, is in every living entity, every living being, along with the individual soul. And this fact is perceived and hypothesized in our acts of seeing and taking help from intelligence, from the intelligence. So Prabhupada's purport is uh, one, two, three pages. And uh, if we can follow it, we can see Krishna in our heart. <laughs> Purport. The general argument of the common man is that since the Lord is not visible to our eyes, how can one either surrender unto him or render transitive loving service unto him? To such a common man, here is a practical suggestion given by Srila Sukadeva Goswami as, as to how one can perceive the Supreme Lord by reason and perception. Actually, the Lord is not perceivable by our present materialized senses, but when one is convinced of the presence of the Lord by a practical service attitude, there is a revelation by the Lord's mercy, and such a pure devotee of the Lord can perceive the Lord's presence always and everywhere. He can perceive that the intelligence is the form direction of the Paramatma, plenary portion of the personality of Godhead. The presence of Paramatma in everyone's company is not very difficult to realize, even for the common man. The procedure is as follows. One can perceive one's self-identification and feel positively, positively that he exists. He may not feel it very abruptly, but by using a little intelligence, he can feel that he is not the body. He can feel that the hands, the legs, the head, the hair, and the limbs are all his bodily parts and parcels, but as such, the hand, the leg, the head, etc., cannot be identified with his self. <clears throat> Therefore, just by using intelligence, he can distinguish and separate him, himself, or his self, from other things that he sees. So the natural conclusion is that the living entity, either man or beast, is the seer, and he sees besides himself, all other things. So there is a difference between the seer and the seen. Now by a little use of intelligence, we can also readily agree that the living beings who sees the things beyond himself by ordinary vision has no power to see or to move independently. All our ordinary actions and perceptions depend on various forms of energy supplied to us by nature in various combinations. Our sense of perception and of action, that is to say, our five perceptive senses of one, hearing, two, touch, <clears throat> three, sight, four, taste, and five, smell, as well as our five senses of action, namely hands, legs, speech, evacuation organ, and reproductive organ, are also, and also three subtle senses, namely mind, intelligence, and ego, 13 senses in all, are supplied to us by various arrangements of gross or subtle forms of, of natural energy, natural energy. And it is equally evident that our objects of perception are nothing but the products of the inexhaustible permutation and combinations of the forms taken by natural energy. Everybody, are we with us on this? Huh? I'm, I have to make sure I'm with it. Let me just repeat the last sentence. And it is equally evident that our objects of perception, 
the things that we see or taste or touch, whatever, are nothing but the products of the inexhaustible permutation and combination of the forms taken by material energy. As this conclusively proves that the ordinary living being has no independent power of perception or of motion, as we are undoubtedly feel our existence being conditioned by natural energy, we conclude that he who sees is spirit, that the senses as well as the objects of perception are material. The spiritual quality of the seer is manifest in our dissatisfaction with the limited stage of materially conditioned existence. This is the difference between spirit and matter. I'll just repeat that again also. The spiritual quality of the seer is manifest in our dissatisfaction with the limited state of materially conditioned existence. So, sometimes Prabhupada said this is the qualification. We want to uh, come to Krishna consciousness, we have to be dissatisfied. That's the problem with preaching in some places, you know, people are so enamored with their life and their future and their plans. And so, so they're not at all dissatisfied, and so the preaching becomes a little difficult. Other places where there's, I mean, I'm just practically experienced. Like when I was just preaching in Russia, there the people say they're more dissatisfied, they come quicker. In the, like Orlando, where I also preached, then, you know, you have to spend five years preaching to one guy, then he may come to the temple. Because they have, you know, what do you mean? I have everything I want. I'm, I'm not dissatisfied. But intelligent person will be dissatisfied. Or really intelligent. I'll just repeat it. The spiritual quality of the seer is manifest in our dissatisfaction with the limited state of materially conditioned existence. I mean, everybody is dissatisfied in one sense. But we don't usually uh, like to keep that in the front. You know, we just... Don't be negative, put that in the back, and just have a positive attitude, and that way we think we'll be happy. But we're all, we have to meet the reality, is that we get old and we decide, become diseased and die. So nobody's really happy with that condition. This is the difference between spirit and matter. There are some less intelligent arguments that matter develops the power of seeing and moving at a certain organic, hmm, excuse me, and moving as a certain organic development, but such an argument cannot be accepted because there's no experimental evidence that matter has anywhere produced a living entity. Trust no future, however pleasant. Idle talks regarding future development of matter into spirit are actually foolish because no matter has ever developed the power of seeing or moving in any part of the world. Therefore, it is definite that matter and spirit are two different entities, and this conclusion is arrived at by use of intelligence. So you, you're with us, Mr. Theologian? Any complaints so far from the... Prabhupada is pretty clear. Now we come to the point that the things which are seen by a little use of intelligence cannot be animated unless we accept someone as the user or director of the intelligence. I'm going to repeat that. Now we come to the point that the things which are seen by a little use of intelligence cannot be animated unless we accept someone as the user of or director of the intelligence. Intelligence gives one direction like some higher authority. And the living being cannot see or move or eat or do anything without the use of intelligence. When one fails to take advantage of intelligence, he becomes a deranged man and so a living being is dependent on intelligence or the direction of a superior being. Such intelligence is all-pervading. Every living being has his intelligence, and this intelligence, being the direction of some higher authority, is just like a father giving direction to his son. The higher authority, who is present and residing within every living being, or individual living being, is the super-soul. So now we're coming to the next stage. Not only are we different than matter, and we are conscious, but there's also a superconscious, and that superconscious is right there in our heart, <clears throat> uh, giving us intelligence. Intelligence is coming from above. We say someone is gifted uh, to speak so nicely, to be a genius in some way. 
But where is that coming from? Bob was giving the example. Like the father is directing the son. Go here, do that. So, intelligence then is very valuable. Prabhupada was always appreciating intelligence. We're looking for intelligent class of men. Why is it so valuable? Because it's just next to the super soul. But it has to be properly uh, used. If we use intelligence how to manipulate material energy, we may make fantastic arrangements here, but it won't solve the real problem, which uh, originally Prabhupada is saying, which makes us dissatisfied. The real problem, we're dissatisfied because we're in a temporary world and we're eternal. And we don't want to suffer, but we have to suffer. Our nature is to be full of joy, anandamaya vyasya, but uh, everybody has to suffer. So this is where the proper use of intelligence should be, not to make money or to make cell phones or the latest, what are they, Kindle books or whatever. No, it's to uh, make a solution with your intelligence to the dilemma that everyone faces, the existential dilemma. This is the real use of intelligence. At this point in our investigation, we may consider the following questions. On the one hand, we realize that all our perceptions and activities are conditioned by arrangements of material nature, yet we ordinarily feel and say, I am perceiving and I am doing. Therefore, we can say that our material sense of perception and action are moving because we are identifying the self with the material body, and that the superior principle of super soul is guiding and supplying us according to our desire. But taking advantage of the guidance of super soul in the form of intelligence, we can either continue to study and to put into practice our conclusion that I am not this body, or we can choose to remain in the false material identification, fancying ourselves to be the possessors and, and doers. Our freedom consists in ori orientating our desire either towards the ignorant material conception or the true spiritual conception. We can easily attain to the true spiritual conception by recognizing the super soul, Paramatma, to be our friend and guide, and by dovetailing our intelligence with the superior intelligence of Paramatma. So this is where the free choice comes. <clears throat> we think we have an advantage here in the material world. Therefore, it's more difficult to preach to Americans than it is to the Russians or somebody. Because uh, they really, well, you know, it's a little frustrating here. It's true. The, the leader, this, uh, but here we think, oh, no, no, everything is okay. We'll be, we just have to get a new president. Now we have Obama. Then everything will be better. <clears throat> the super soul and the individual self are both spirit, and therefore the super soul and the individual self are both qualitatively one and distinct from matter. Qualitatively one. But the super soul and the individual soul cannot be on an equal level because the super soul gives direction or supplies intelligence and the individual self follows the direction and thus actions are performed properly. The individual is completely dependent on the direction of the super soul because at every step the individual self knows the direction of the super self in the matter follows the direction of the super self in the matter of seeing, hearing, thinking, feeling, willing, etc. Nicho nichanam, chaitanam chaitanam. So there are two eternals. One is dependent, one is independent. We both have consciousness, but if we are honest, we'll see we are dependent. At every step, we're dependent. What is our position if there's no supply of air? We think we're independent, we're free, white, and 21, we could do whatever we want. No. We are, every step, we're dependent. So proper use of intelligence means to declare our dependency, yes. Let me surrender to the independent. Then I'll have real freedom. Otherwise, I'm uh, chasing some illusory, false conception. <clears throat> okay, one more paragraph. Nice purport, huh? So far as common sense is concerned, we come to the conclusion that there are three identities, namely matter, spirit, and super-spirit. Now, if we go to the Bhagavad Gita or Vedic intelligence, we can further understand that all three identities, namely matter, individual spirit, and super-spirit, are all dependent on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
The super soul or super self is a partial representation or plenary portion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Bhagavad Gita affirms that the Supreme Personality of Godhead dominates all over the material world by his partial representation only. God is great and he cannot be simply an order supplier of the individual selves. Therefore, the super self cannot be a full representation of the Supreme Self. Purushottam, the absolute personality of Godhead, cannot be, he has to be. I'll just repeat that. God is great and he cannot be simply an order supplier of the individual self. So in one sense, the, the Paramatma is like an order supplier. Uh, if we really pray very sincerely that we want to make the solution to the scientific, then the, the scientists will get direction from the super self. But it can't be that that's all God can be. It's just an uh, order supplier. Therefore, the super self cannot be a full representation of the supreme self, Purushottam, the absolute personality of Godhead. Realization of the super self by the individual self is the beginning of self-realization, and by the progress of such self-realization, one is able to realize the Supreme Personality of Godhead by intelligence, by the help of authorized scripture, and principally by the grace of the Lord. The Bhagavad Gita is the preliminary conception of the Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, and Sri Bhagavatam is the further explanation of the science of Godhead. <coughs> So if we stick to our determination and pray for the mercy of the director of intelligence sitting within the same bodily tree like a bird sitting with another bird as explained in the Upanishads, certainly the purport of the revealed information in the Vedas becomes clear to our vision and there is no difficulty in realizing the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudev. The intelligent man, therefore, after many, many births at, of such use of intelligence, surrenders himself to the lotus feet of Vasudev, as confirmed by the Bhagavad Gita 7.19. Magyana timidandasya janagana salakayam chaksus militam jena tasmai shi grave namaha shi chaitanya manavistam shapitam jena bhutale sayam upakara maya dadati sa parantika Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adaita Gadada Shri Vasari Gauda Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So everything is here. Material nature, the living entity, the super soul, and the supreme personality of Godhead. So nothing is outside of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. These things are all his various energies. Uh, so there is a oneness, there is an or organic or wholesome conception, not bifurcated, like some devil is there and that we're here and there's always... No. Everything is one, but also different. Like the government is one, but has different departments. And to the ignorant person, they may be working at cross purposes. Oh, the policeman is arresting someone, and someone else is giving uh, food stamps from the government. So, why is that? Because you have to know the purpose of the government. So we have to know the purpose of the Lord. Then we'll see that everything is working properly. There's no cruelty in the arrangement of the Lord. Otherwise... Even the staunch theist may become doubtful. Oh, why is there a big earthquake? So many people just died. What, did they, what was there wrong? Why, why is God uh, allowing innocent children to suffer? I know that was a dilemma for me before I came to Christian consciousness. What kind of God is it that lets little children suffer? Why doesn't he give them? So without having proper philosophy, we'll become doubtful or else fanatical. We don't want to hear. No, I just... Uh, therefore, Prabhupada used to say, religion without philosophy is sentiment or, philo or fanaticism. And philosophy without religion is mental speculation. So Prabhupada has given us the wonderful, uh, complete whole, Om Purnam, full 
Everything is full. Just this one verse, one purport. If we understand it properly, uh, we can become real theologians. Uh, no need to speculate. No need to uh, be fanatical or sentimental. Uh, everything is reasonable, logical. But the application is a little difficult. Why is that? Because of our bad habit. Since time immemorial, we've been putting ourselves in the center. We've been identifying with our material mind and body and as ourself. And so now we're uh, being asked to put Krishna in the center. So there's some training is required. We have to practice, just like one devotee, maybe you know Gargamuni, when he, in the early days, he, uh, he stopped paying obeisances when he came in the temple room. So a report came to Prabhupada, this uh, devotee probably is not paying obeisances. So Prabhupada spoke to him, he said, well, what is the problem? Why you don't want to pay obeisances? So he said, Prabhupada, I have to be, I have to be uh, uh, true to myself. I don't feel like paying obeisances. So why should I pay obeisances? So Prabhupada said, oh, you don't feel like paying obeisances? That's okay. But if you practice paying obeisances, then you will feel like paying obeisances. So there's a practice is required because we're so habituated to putting ourselves, where's the, like a child, immediately goes in the mouth. So we, how are we different than a child? A little more sophisticated, but the same desire is there. Me, me, me. What's my advantage? So now we have to think how to make Krishna happy. Bhakti Vinod Thakur says that. The difference between the uh, devotee and the materialist. The materialist is thinking how to make myself happy. The devotee is thinking how to make Krishna happy. So that doesn't, it, it's a natural but now we're in an unnatural condition, so it's a little difficult. The, the example of jaundice. Sugar cane, sugar, sugar, rock candy is sweet, but for the jaundice person, it, takes, it tastes bitter. But you go on taking, go on taking, and gradually becomes sweet. So we have to go on taking. Not think we're so advanced now that we don't have to uh, you know, finish our rounds carefully, listen attentively, attend the programs. Probably one of these things, even from the leaders. Uh, especially from the leaders. Leader has to lead by example. So we should not try to make a shortcut. Uh, Prabhupada himself was very strict. Sometimes I was amazed how he would come, uh, you know, old, frail body, but he would pay full dandabats in the three places every morning, go into prayers in front of the deity in Mayapur and wherever he went, Vindavan. You could see it was a little bit of a struggle, getting down, putting his hands out in front of him, and then pushing, pushing himself up with his fragile arms. And, but he did it. Why? Because he was teaching us. This is the example. We need to surrender. And this is how you surrender. This is how you practice. You may not feel it, but you go on practicing, go on practicing, and it'll become... Reveal to you, the prophet says here, above all, one has to get the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Krishna is naturally merciful, but he wants to see uh, if we are really sincere. Do we really want that mercy? Or do we want some advantage here in the world that we can lord it over others? Just like we were hearing yesterday about the pastoral abuse. Uh, how even the Iskand devotees have misused their position for uh, sense gratification, for some advantage here in the material world. So Krishna may give you something, but he won't give himself. You may have that advantage over some other living entity, exploit them, but you'll never be able to exploit Krishna. He reserves the right of not revealing himself except to those who are sincerely surrendered, who really are serious about uh, pleasing the Lord, making the Lord happy. We should be anxious about that. That should be our anxiety. Uh, that something will go wrong with Prabhupada's movement. That something will go wrong with my spiritual practices. 
Therefore, I should be very cautious. Prabhupada said, we're dealing with Krishna. We should be very cautious. <coughs> I'm going to stop here. But I'd like to hear comments. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you for the nice class, Maharaj. My question deals with meditating on the super soul and the practice of chanting the holy name. Here we're getting some instruction in this purport about understanding um, our position and the direction we're receiving from the super soul. So as practitioners of sadhana bhakti, um, how deeply do we meditate on the super soul? What is the actual practice that involves you know, our daily life you know, interacting with the super soul? No, the, uh, we're beyond that stage. We're, as Prabhupada says, we're interested in Purushatam, the supreme person. Super soul is the localized aspect. Yogis may be interested in that, but the devotees are interested in the uh, Shamshundar, threefold bending form. Uh, <clears throat> and he's directing them. Now, it may come through the super soul, that direction, but still, our meditation should be on hearing the holy name. Prabhupada used to emphasize that. But that name is the name of, of uh, the Supreme, Purushatam, Krishna not the name of Paramatma. So we should be meditating on Krishna. Here you have Radhakala Chandra. You're meditating on the Supreme. Uh, there's no dichotomy there. If we please the Supreme, Bhagavan, Purushatam, then the Super Soul will be also uh, friendly to us, guiding us how to increase our devotion, how to... Uh, so that's my understanding. The, the main thing is to chant with devotion and regularly, not to miss a day or, or with attention, not while we're driving the car, we count those as our 16 rounds. No, we should, just like we saw Vaisha Shaker this morning, has a nice seat, sits there. That's the process. Every day we get in the habit of chanting our rounds carefully, then the super soul automatically uh, guide us. Teisham sarata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami bhuti. Krishna says, I will give you the intelligence. Now that intelligence, like I say, it may come through super soul, may come through the shastra, may come through uh, sadhu, guru, uh, but we have to be open for it. That's our qualification. How to be open for that ongoing inspiration, revelation. Some other points? Maharaj. I heard you. Go ahead. In the purport it says. In the purport it says that the direction is coming from the super soul and the living entity follows. So does that mean that all direction all direction that we experience in our life, material life, spiritual life, all directions come from the super soul, and what our role is is simply to follow, we follow in every circumstance? Yes, but that, based on our desire, the super soul reciprocate. Desire is like a prayer. So if we desire to be a famous scientists, then Krishna can give us intelligence. Okay, here's how you can do that. Because our desire... The, the key is desire, our individual desire. Nobody can take that away from us. But if it's coming, we're, otherwise how are they getting these qualifications? You know, how is one person becoming so prominent in the world? Like our president. Why He desired, he wanted, yes, I want to be president. So then other things were in line, and he, okay, the soul gave him, reciprocated. So yes, the answer is yes. The super soul has been guiding us like two birds on a tree. Since we leave, when we leave them into the spiritual world, then the super soul agrees to accompany us. And it's the witness, and as we uh, desire, he, he reciprocates. That's my understanding. And I can be corrected on that. But on this point, any contrary? You have, he has a question too, but...
On this point, is it settling? You're, you're okay? Um, so, the logic that Srila Prabhupada presents in the purport is that we're guided by the intelligence. It's not us, and it doesn't seem to be dull matter. So, it's coming from a person. There seems to be a, a little gap uh, uh, when that guidance is attributed to a personality called the Supreme Personality or Super Soul. Um, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, it's, of course it's very well presented in the, in the purport, but I'm thinking if I made the same presentation to a materialist, uh, what would his or her argument be? Because there seems to be a little gap, seems to be a little leap. Well, yeah, it's filtered through our false ego in contact with the mode of passion, then the mind, and then so, uh, <clears throat> because of our desire, uh, you know, in one sense, the super soul is always saying, come and enjoy with me, but we're insisting, come back to the spiritual world. No, I don't want to, I have an advantage here. And so we remain, following our mind and senses. And then the next life, the mind goes with us, and again, same problem. But by good fortune, Bhagavan, Bhagavan, Ji, Guru, Guru Krishna Prasad, Vai Bhakti Lata Bij. We meet the devotees, and the great fortune, we can get that Bhakti Lata Bij. Then we can, can begin to see what's actually is happening. Otherwise, the material is always thinking, I did it. The doer. I'm the doer. That's okay. I, that's okay for for me, I have subscribed to this theology, <laughs> but someone who didn't... Uh, so you pose their question. You, you take their position and challenge. Yes, yeah, so my, my question, it's not, it's not a challenge, it's just a question. No, it I'm, a, be a, I'm a rational human being and uh, uh, I have to admit I am, I'm ignorant and I'm trying to understand how do we attribute this guidance of intelligence to that what you call super soul. Okay, so the way you, you admit that you're ignorant, that's a good qualification. So the process is you should regularly hear from those who have knowledge, who are not ignorant. But this so is the process. So this is, no, no, there's no getting around the process. For everything there's a process. But you want so to many eat, processes well, I'm not so finished talking, people. I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. Materialist. Like if you want to eat, there's a process, you have to put the food in your mouth. You can't put it in your ear and say, I want to, no, there's a process. You want to understand the super soul? That's what was your question. How can I understand the super soul is guiding? You can understand, but there's a process. You have to regularly hear from those who understand this fact. This is the process. Are you willing to take that process, Mr. Materialist? Um, no. Then go away. We want innocent people. <laughs> We're looking for innocent people. Prabhupada was saying, it. innocent person what? The qualification of an innocent person, he's ready to hear. So that's what we're saying. You want to understand this subject matter, you have to be ready to hear. If you're not ready to hear, what can we say? Mr. Priest, I just heard it. I just heard it. I did lend my ear to you. But uh, um, there's so many people who say the same thing, very same thing. That's all right. So there may be so many cheaters, but it doesn't mean there's not a real thing. So this is the process. It's if you're fortunate, it. you'll find a real thing. But don't give up on the process. Somebody else said that? Because in the purport, Prabhupada lays out a logical progression. No doubt, ultimately, we have to surrender to the process and become purified and you'll understand. Still, we do make appeals to logic. Yeah. So... How do I distinguish? I can just say, well, I have my material intelligence based on my, that's where I'm getting direction. I have a, I have a basis of experience, and I filter that through, and I make intelligent choices, and that's what's directing me. Now you're saying that really my intelligence is getting direction from somewhere else. So I'm simply asking, can you provide an, an example for me where it's, where I'm getting, as probably in that purport, as if help from a higher where is an example that I'm getting intelligent help from a higher beyond what would be my natural processing of my experience? You follow? Yes. Thank you. It's a good question. Okay. 
Just like we say instinct. What is instinct? It's intelligence, but it's, it's already programmed. The child instinctively goes to the breast of the mother. The little duck instinctively follows the, the mother. So how do we explain that in your science? Well, I always take shots of DNA, but I like your answer better. <laughs> no, it, it stands to reason that Shakespeare uh, or somebody like uh, Mozart, he, he already knew music when he was a child, three or four years old. So that's the first thing. Use your intelligence to understand who you are, that you're not this body. Probably comes to that point, you're not this body. That's why they have to hear. And then, uh, very nicely, Prabhupada apply. he said, then it's your choice. You can either remain fancying yourself as the possessors and the doers, or we can uh, choose to remain, to, I mean, to accept that I'm not this body, and then to engage in the service of the Supreme. So we always have that choice. So my experience is, the materialists, they also have that choice, but they prefer to remain as the doers. And so, what can we do? They have, they have a preference. They don't want to believe in God. They don't want to believe in the soul. They have a vested interest in denying these things because they think they have an advantage here. And so they're left to their own resources. Your karma. But if you're more intelligent, then you'll say, yes, even this intelligence is coming from something. I say my intelligence, but sometimes I forget. Where's your intelligence then? It's not something that you just can hold as such. It's flowing. And sometimes it flows more readily, trippingly, as Shakespeare said, from the mouth, speaking tripping, <laughs> very nicely, because you're, be you're being directed. Other times, everything's jammed up. You can't remember. So it's, you're talking about your intelligence as something that you kind of have a possession of. But no, it's a gift. It's coming down. Isn't that your experience? Sometimes there are epiphanies, flashes of inspiration. I agree. Yeah. Even for ordinary things. You can forget somebody's name. You just saw so Oh, and then you see them. You feel embarrassed. Oh, I don't know. I forgot their name. <laughs> Somebody else had a question in the back. I think this is the last one. We're running out of time, right? Hare Krishna. Oh, okay. Um, I'm wondering, Krishna is, is aloof from, from us until we have a desire to reconnect with him. So my question is, it's, if Paramatma is, is guiding us toward our desires, why, why does Paramatma seem not to be aloof if we're desiring sinful activity, which most materialists in this world are, that's what all they're doing is, is every day they're working for more materialistic goals and sinful activities. No, but why do you say Krishna's aloof? He's giving you this material energy, this maya to, to work out your, your uh, fantasy. He's not aloof. I say he's aloof because, well, I've always been taught that he's aloof to the uh, goings-ons of the material world, the karmic activity, until we turn around and start wanting to serve him again. You know, he doesn't get in the way of, of our So neither activity. does a super soul. Doesn't get in your way. It, it's just a facilitates. Okay, you want this? If you really want it, okay, here, here's the facility you can... How does the super soul get in the way. I'm, I'm asking, it's, well it seems to me that from this explanation that the super soul is guiding us toward our desires. No, not guiding us, facilitating is better. Facilitating is a better word. Yeah. Man proposes, God disposes. <laughs> well it seems uh, that Paramatma, yeah. the super soul, seems to be a little more... No, it's like two birds on a tree. One is witnessing and the other is acting. Yeah. Where, where's Paramatma's position within that? Paramatma is the, soup, is the bird on the tree, the second bird, what, witnessing. Witnessing it, the activities of the living entity. Just to witness because... No, he, he, as you desire, okay, he'll give you a facility. Why would he do that? <laughs> so that you can learn that this is not your real home. 
so that you become qualified to again enter into the spiritual world. He doesn't have to do it, it's true. In one sense, he could just say, go to hell. We've turned away from God. That's why the, you know, Christians and others pick up this idea. Yes, God just condemns you forever and ever and ever. You've turned away from God. What right do you have to say, uh, why don't you give me proper directions, super soul? You don't want proper directions. You've turned away from God. Now you're criticizing that God has agreed to stay with you as your friend and as a witness. Yes? Thank you. I was just thinking also that, you know, he's not just, he's not, I, I was feeling that he's not really aloof in the fact that he set up the material world in such a way as his uh, loving concern so that even if, even if he facilitates all of our material desires, they'll, they will in time make us distasteful of this material world and want to turn back to him. Yeah, that's nice. Therefore we say Maya, another form of, um, name for Maya is mercy. The mercy, mercy is that she's kicking us and make us frustrated to see that this is not our real position. So we should be thankful that Krishna has given us this nice material world that we can work out our delusions and realize fully from within our heart, Param Jishtanavartite, by getting a higher taste, that this material world is chewing the chewed. There's no real happiness here. But we have, we have to be convinced of that in the core of our hearts. If we look in the core of our hearts, if it's still material desires are there, then... We have to get kicked more. So what time are we supposed to stop? 8.30. So we got one question more. Ladies? Okay, okay we'll stop. One more. Yogi. If he was, if he was you know, too attached to all of our bundles and mistakes and things that we do wrong. Mm. Just like a father has a child, at a certain age the child is going to be independent, so the father may be wishing the child wouldn't do that, but uh, he feels some unhappiness that the son is going in the wrong direction, but he doesn't interfere. He realizes no, this, if the child has to have his own uh, independence, otherwise... What does it mean? Okay, we'll stop you. Shri Bhagavatam ki. Shri Prabhupada ki. Shri Prabhupada ki.